Welcome grade 12 to this very special video where I've been receiving a lot of requests about talking about the theory paper for the NSC exams for both CAT and IT. So I'm going to do it over three videos. I'm going to divide the paper into three different sections which I'm going to discuss and I'll talk about both the CAT and the IT papers. There'll be valuable information for both students so I would take note of the little things. I'm going to be giving tips throughout the video so even if I'm talking about the CAT paper and you're an IT student there will be some value in things and little tips that I do talk about. I'm not going to go through all the answers, but I'm just going to go through what are the types of things that you need to be aware of, what you need to look out for, and uh, what to expect. So let's start off. We're going to so this video we're going to look particularly at the short questions, how we can answer them, just little some basic tips on that. So yeah, I've got 2023 November. Well, I've got the memo over here as well. So if you want to refer to how they are answered, so I can show you what they are looking for. So if I scroll down here, you'll notice that your paper is divided up into three sections. The first section will be the short questions or the not so Mr. Long questions and then there is the general content and then the last section tends to be a integrated scenario type question. When it comes to the IT paper it's very similar. We have section A which is the short questions and then they've got a couple more sections. They but basically B and C, D and E is the same as section B of CAT. It's the same type of content except for there'll be some questions about programming over here and then they both end off with an integrated scenario type question. So there you can see the general breakdown of the questions. Just please to make note, always start each question on a new page. Don't write in the margins. Leave a line between each question. By laying your questions out nice and neatly, it'll be a lot easier for the markers to mark. And that means there's less likely of them to make a mistake and not allocate you marks. Just take note, one mark is allocated per fact. So therefore, a two mark question needs two facts. But they tend to only mark the first two. So if you give them three facts and they're only looking for two, it doesn't matter that the first and the third fact is correct and the second one isn't they only mark the first two so make sure that you have your best answers first and then this one is a particular one that I see students struggling with is that you tend to answer questions with the word cheaper slower faster we'll talk about that in our next video when we deal with the section B questions and again a reminder don't use brand names in your answers unless you are specifically required to so for example you're not referring to Microsoft Word you're talking about word processors you're not talking about a Dell computer you're talking about about a laptop so talk about the type of computer only if they ask you for a particular brand is is when they're referring to it so let's go look at the short questions it normally starts off with potentially multiple choice questions and so the key thing here when I approach multiple choice questions there's three strategies that I tend to recommend the first strategy is when you read the question and then you know straight away what the answer is so if I look for example at yeah, 1.8 this is a definite definition so you're reading that question and you know exactly what the answer is and then you look for that answer in the list that's how you approach those type of questions now some of these questions are questions where you have to look at all of the possibilities in this case for example which one of the phone is considered a strong password you would look at all of them and you eliminate the ones that are definitely wrong so for example QWERTY123 that would definitely be wrong I know it's got letters and numbers but there's no capitals and it's quite similar to your keyboard it's quite a generic one so we wouldn't use that one we wouldn't use B because there's no numbers over there and password is a terrible password so of those options we've eliminated A, B and D and therefore that one it's got a whole bunch of special characters it's got numbers it's got capital letters small letters that's our better option it's nice and long that is going to be our answer so we eliminated the options that were definitely not the right answer and therefore we could find the right one so that's your second strategy first option read the question and you know what the answer is and then if you can't do that then go eliminate the options that are definitely not the answer and then you can pick the right one from what's left over and then the third option is I haven't had a B for a while but I wouldn't recommend using that as the first option try the first two first and another important tip don't leave these questions out you've got a 25% chance of getting this question right by just guessing so make sure that you don't leave it out if you are doing this question and you want to come back but you're not sure rather just give an answer in the meantime and put a star in your question paper over here so you can mark off okay I must come back to that question later you can come back and double check and see if you want to change your answer but rather put an answer in the beginning take a guess so that if something happens and you don't get time to come back to it you've at least had a chance to get 25% chance to get that answer correct the IT paper also has multiple choice they're not as many there's five in this case and it's the second part of the short questions but they are a couple of multiple choice questions there same strategy is applied read the question if you know the answer find it and then answer it and if you don't know the answer then eliminate the ones that are definitely not the correct answer then in the cat paper you'll also get a matching terms question 
situation where you're going to read this question and find which of these options best fits that scenario. Now, there's always one answer for one option. There's never a duplicate in this case. You'll never use the same letter for multiple questions. One thing that some people tend to do wrong is they go from the first question to the last question, answering them in order. I would mark off all the numbers in your exam paper. If you don't know an answer, let's say I look at this question and I don't know which one it is. Don't fill it in. Leave it out for now and move to the next one. Because what happens sometimes is sometimes you will try to figure out this answer and you'll say maybe it's this a collection of instructions that enables your computer to perform a specific task. I think for me, there's going to be software, but let's say you didn't know it was software. Let's say I'm not too sure about that maybe that's the switch and so what happens is you might think that that is a so if you write down a as your answer for this question when you get to the other questions you might unintentionally not even think about a anymore because you've used it up but you've used it up incorrectly so for example yeah they said use to connect multiple devices well that's a switch so because you've used a yeah you might not end up using the correct option for 2.3 so that's why go through the ones that you definitely do know and then mark them off well at that point is definitely software so we're going to mark that off a single html file on the internet that's that's definitely a web page and you mark off the ones that you definitely know and then you come back to the ones that you don't know and then see what's left over from the list of options so that's what i would do for the matching terms again don't leave it out take a chance take a guess at them you can always circle this in your question paper go i don't know that one i'm going to take a guess now but i'll come back and see if i can correct it later if it's a problem but make sure that you at least give yourself a chance of getting one of the options available in the IT paper, you have something very similar. You can see it's normally the first part of the exam from last year, but it's again, the same thing. Look at the options, go identify which one is. You just have to write down the, the number of the question and which option matches that scenario. So for example, 1.11, if you think this is green computing, then you will just put an H in your exam booklet next to 1.1.1 as your answer for this question. And then in the CAT paper, they have a true and false question. In this scenario, they've said we must write down the word true or the word false. Now you do not get a mark if you just write the word false. If you write the word false, you need to write a word that's going to replace the underlined word. So if we look at this, for example, they give you a scenario. If you think it's true, then say it's true. If you think it's not true, if it's false, if you just write false, it doesn't matter. You're going to get it wrong anyway. You need to say false with a word that you will use to replace the underlined word. So you could take a stab and just guess everything is true. A lot of the time, majority of the answers are going to be false. There tends to not be more true than false because it's very easy just to say true. But at least you got a shot at getting some of them. So if you're not sure what the word is, then just say true. If you do know it's false and you know what the word is, then that take a step. But if we were doing this question and you say a hub allows a computer to send and receive data via a telephone. Now we know that is false. That's not a hub. So you would say false. Now you need to take away that underlined word and you need to ask yourself a what allows a computer to send and receive data via a telephone and then you'll go oh that is a modem if we come down here to the answers there you can see they've actually given a couple of options but a modem allows you to send and receive data over a telephone line so you are replacing that word with the correct option that will make that statement now true but be very careful about this question. Read the instructions carefully. It has happened in the past where I've seen a question paper where they've said the following statements are false. They've told you there's no true ones. They are all false. You just need to rewrite the underlined word so that it becomes true. So you need to change that to modem and so on. So that's what you would have to do. I don't think they'll do that, but just make sure that you read the question carefully in case they do ask it in a different way. It was very weird to see that type of question where they say the following statements are false, correct the underlined word to make it true. And then some people still go true, 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 true. Read the question, make sure that it is this type of scenario and that you answer it correctly. And then in RT, we have a one word or term section. It's very similar where you've got like almost like a definition and you must write the word that is closely associated with this. So it's almost like the true and false, except for we've been told, like, just give us the term that matches that scenario. So for example, 1.3.3, a type of malware that prevents a user from accessing his and her data on a device until a fee is paid. Well, if you know your definitions well, you know, oh, that's ransomware. And if we come over here and look at that, yes, we can see ransomware is the answer. So yeah, you're just writing down the word that is associated with that definition. So that tends to be the short questions or the not to Mr. Long questions. So just to recap, so CAT students, you're going to get multiple choice questions, probably about 10 of them. Make sure you don't leave any of them out. And when you label them in your exam booklets, make sure that you put them down in order underneath each other. Don't 
don't make columns just go 1.1 1.2 1.3 it's a lot easier for the markers and then do the same thing for the matching terms 2.1 2.2 you don't necessarily have to leave a line in between i know they say you must leave a line in between questions this tends to be okay if you don't leave a line for the other questions yes definitely but because these are easy to mark if you just have letters and that you can just put them one underneath each other but make sure that you label them underneath each other don't leave them out True and false, make sure you say true if you think it's true. If it's false, you must give a word that will be used where the underlined word is to make that statement true. So for example, yeah, green computing is the study of the impact of technology on users. Ah, oh, that's not it. That's ergonomics. So you will change that word to ergonomics. So you'll say false, comma, ergonomics. 3.4 false is ergonomics. Yes, ergonomics is the study of the impact of technology on users. So you just say false and what is the word that is going to replace the underlined word? And that will be your true false question. And then for IT students, remember you've got a bunch of matching terms in the beginning, about 10 of them, then about five multiple choice. Well, this is the, what they had last year. And then some definitions that you had to write down what the term is for that particular definition. So that's about 20 marks for the IT students. That gives you an idea of what to look at. In our next video, we're going to look particularly at the theory questions, the hardware, software, internet, networking type questions. And we're going to talk about the integrated scenario in that video. And then our third video, we'll talk about the practical type questions that relate to the packages. So go check out those videos and hopefully it'll help you with your exams. If you are using this video to help with your theory paper, then you need to go and subscribe to at Mr. Long Computer Terms. That's a channel with all our theory videos that will help you for your exams. Make sure that you click on the subscribe button, share it with your friends, and remember, don't do it the long way, do it the Mr. Long way.